So in this video we're going to look at tuning your grandmother and there are two types of tuning which we will look into and explore during the course of this video. Now before we get started I have to make this sort of warning. Danger Will Robinson, danger! It's just something which happened to my grandmother during the course of this test. Now, I don't think it's something you need to be overly worried about, but I do have to mention it because it did happen and I'll show you exactly what did happen. So as a result of that, I really have to make the disclaimer that if you follow the procedures in this video, I cannot be held responsible in any way at all. Now, essentially, all I am doing is showing you step for step how to implement instructions which are on Moog's site. So I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary, but as I say, this weird thing happened, which we will get into in due course. So it is something you need to be aware of. Right, let's get started. So the first thing is how to tune your grandmother so it plays nicely with other instruments. Now you probably know that is a fine tune knob on the back of the grandmother. When you look at the back, it's on the extreme left. This is notched so it is easy to find the central position and in that position the grandmother should play international pitch which is a equals 440 hertz now this will allow you to play with just about any other instrument provided they have also been correctly tuned but there may be occasions when you are playing with a, a person or group of people who are not tuned exactly to a equals 440 so you may want to fine tune the pitch of the grandmother this might happen if you are playing in a band and they have tuned to a guitar which has not been correctly tuned so that may be a little bit out it could also happen if you are playing with a piano for example now a grand piano in a concert hall should be perfectly tuned but there will be many pianos in bar rooms and other places which have not been quite so accurately tuned so you may need to fine tune your grandmother to fit in with their tuning the second type of tuning is to make sure that the grandmother is in tune with itself and that means that the notes when you play across the keyboard it makes sure that all the notes track correctly so they are all in tune with each other now to set up this sort of tuning the grandmother has a built-in feature to do this which is called calibration it's totally automatic so for example we mentioned international tuning where the a above middle c equals 440 hertz so that is what the a above middle c should sound on your grandmother if we go down an octave then the air below that should be 220 it may be a little flat or sharp we'll get into that in a second but if it is way out of kilter then the two notes if you play them one after another will not sound in tune so that would be something which we would fix by calibration now your grandmother should have been calibrated correctly at the factory so it really shouldn't need it on rare occasions something may have happened perhaps due to extreme temperature changes or whatever that affects analog circuitry the tuning may have got out of whack somehow so you may need to retune it also this is an analog machine so over time the components will wear and possibly change the pitch of the instrument so after hopefully several years or many years you may need to calibrate your mug but you can easily test whether your Moog needs calibration or not using a tuner. So I will show you how to do that. Now, just before we get into all that, a strange thing happened to my grandmother after I ran the calibration routine. And this is the warning which I mentioned earlier. Now, it all worked out well in the end, but it was pretty weird and it was a little bit disconcerting. So this is why I issued a warning. So I popped back in the middle of this video to explain what was going on and what was happening. So first of all, what you need to do is to be able to measure the pitch of the grandmother. Now, as I keep saying, this is an analog machine. This is an analog machine. So you need to give it a little while to warm up. I would certainly give it 15, if not 20 minutes to make sure that the circuitry has reached an even temperature and it produces a stable and accurate pitch. 
now to measure the pitch you can use any sort of tuner that you like i used the tuner plugin which comes with cubase added to an audio track and the tuner should react to incoming audio if you don't have cubase or your door doesn't have a tuner and you don't have a tuner you can get a free tuner plugin from melda productions called m tuner i shall leave a link to that in the description the plugin also comes with a lot of other free goodies now before we dive in a very brief explanation of how the tuner works it shows the pitch as a frequency and hertz it also shows the no name and it also shows by how much out the incoming pitch is if indeed it is out at all and this difference is measured in cents now the pitch difference between one semitone and another is 100 cents so if a pitch is out by a few cents that's a fraction of a semitone you are probably not going to notice now you probably want to know at least i certainly did what is the smallest number of cents that we can discern so if something is out by two or three cents would we actually be able to tell the difference now trying to get an absolute answer to this is very very complicated because our perception of the difference in two pitches it depends on the frequency range that these pitches are in it depends on the tone or timbre of the pitches themselves it depends on the intensity or loudness of the pitches it depends on the context whether they are individual tones or tones in a piece of music for example and it also depends on you and your ears different people are more sensitive to changes in pitch than others so it's a really difficult question to answer but since you are pressing me i did come across some information on the web which suggests that about five or six cents difference in pitch is so small that most people probably couldn't tell the difference however you might want to up that a little bit to perhaps 10 12 13 cents before you would notice the difference and if it is in a piece of music then it's quite possible that you could have an even larger difference and nobody would think that it was out of tune so the tuner measures pitch differences in sense so when we run the test you can see by how much the pitch of the grandmother is out from international 440. right let's run the test and see if my grandmother is out of tune so let's see how in tune the grandmother is so this is oscillator one with the fine tune notch in the central position so this should be producing a at 440 hertz and you can see it is pretty close but it's not quite there it's around 10 cents sharp so let's switch this out and try oscillator two so oscillator 2 is also about 10 cents sharp which means the two oscillators should be pretty much at the same frequency so if we play them both together they should not produce a beating sound so let's see so i have turned up the tone a little bit apologies if it's sending your dog into fits but the two oscillators are actually really very close there is no beating that i can hear i do find that a little bit strange because whenever i've tried to tune these two oscillators using the tune knob in oscillator 2 i haven't quite managed to get them to be so close they have always been a cent or two out and produced a little bit of a beaten frequency in most cases this is generally desirable as it produces a thicker and more interesting sound so let's just skip up and down the keyboard a little bit and see how the pitches perform in other octaves so this is oscillator one and i've just used the pitch control to send it down an octave and you can see this is only eight cents sharp so a minor improvement let's take it down another octave so this is on the 32 foot 
pitch setting and it is only six cents sharp so there's not a massive amount in it this is an analog machine it's using analog circuitry i would say that is fairly accurate let's go up the keyboard and see what happens now this is interesting because the higher pitch is even more out of tune than the lower pitches let's press a key and get a higher pitch than this so this is 16 cents out which is about one sixth of a semitone now whether you would actually be able to hear that certainly in a performance piece or not i don't know that depends on how sensitive your ears are And this is oscillator 2, which is out by about the same amount. So the two oscillators seem to be pretty well tuned together, although across a range of notes, across several octaves, the pitch does seem to differ a little bit. Having said that, I'm not sure if it's enough so that anyone would notice. And personally, I'm quite happy with the tuning state of my more grandmother. However, for the sake of this video on this experiment, let us now calibrate it. And you do that by going into global mode, by pressing and holding the shift and the hard sync button for a second or more, and the sync button will start to flash. Now to start calibration, you hold down the three buttons in the keyboard performance section. That's the play, the shift and the tap buttons. And then you press the lowest white note on the keyboard. At that point, the three buttons flash madly and calibration is beginning. Now, I have absolutely no idea how long this takes or if it varies from one grandmother to another or if it depends on how far out the grandmother is. So I'm just going to let this run. I'm going to fast forward the video and let you know how long it took. Hurrah, so it's finished. That didn't take as long as I thought it might. I did see on one forum, someone posted a message saying it had been running for 15 minutes and was still running. As they say, however, your mileage may vary. Okay, let us see what the oscillators are reading now. I think we may have to power cycle the grandmother. Yes, definitely did have to power cycle the grandmother. So here I am popping up to explain what's going on. At this point, I was actually getting pitches out of the grandmother, but the oscillators were not playing correctly. The waveforms didn't sound right on certain notes. Now I made a little video so you can hear exactly what happened and what is going on. So this is oscillator one. Change waveform. This is oscillator two, much the same. So I was obviously a little bit concerned to say the least. I performed about half a dozen recalibrations I power cycle between each one. I switched the grandmother off and left it for several minutes, but none of these had any effect and I was still getting this problematic sound. So at this point I'm thinking, oh dear, or words to that effect, uh, the grandmother will have to go back for repair. However, as it was at least playing in tune, I decided to press on and complete the test. I will say more about this weird sound after the rest of this video. Well, the oscillator is still not working properly. I will have to see what I can do about that. Uh, but we are still getting pitches coming through for it. So if we have a look at that, uh, we can see it is a little bit closer, one or two cents out. So it has tuned itself um, a little bit more closer to 440. Let's go down. 
so if we go down an octave you can see that it is just a cent out let's go down another octave and that is also pretty good let's go up so we can see now that is this is also as close as the other so it has certainly pulled it back into line in the upper registers and this is an octave higher than that and again this is very very close more than near enough for jazz so i think i probably knocked the tuning knob on oscillator 2 when i was messing about changing the various settings so i've tried to tune oscillator 2 to oscillator 1 i seem to have done a pretty good job so if we go down an octave it is still in tune and if we go down another octave it is still in tune and if we go up another octave it is still in tune and just to prove i'm not fiddling the figures i shall twiddle the tuning dial a little so you can see that the tuning did move so that is the Moog in tune now we we'll just have to sort out the problems with the oscillators so i hope you could follow that the calibration certainly brought the grandmother back into more accurate tuning as i said earlier had i not been making this video i would not have bothered to calibrate my grandmother so you may be wondering what on earth happened to my grandmother to produce this strange sound well i did as many calibrations and tests on it as i could i tried to google the symptoms and i didn't find one result which was similar to mine which may or may not mean anything however the next day i switched it on and would you believe it was working perfectly shock surprise amazement but of course delight now i've tried it over the last few days i have left it on for several hours and it seems to be working perfectly so what happened well i don't know for sure because i'm not a synthesizer engineer but my best guess is that when i was performing the tests it was a really really hot day something we are not really used to in the uk so i'm guessing the grandmother was quite warm now we are not talking furnace conditions here and i am sure the grandmother operates quite successfully in temperatures much higher than this however quite possibly a combination of the heat and the calibration process caused this temporary hopefully malfunction so exactly what happens during calibration i don't know i suspect it is some sort of digital circuitry which looks at the pitches coming out of the oscillators and tweaks them a little bit to make sure they are in tune so that's my best guess i may be totally white of the mark if anyone has any ideas about what might have happened well this would certainly be interesting but you can be sure that i will not be calibrating my grandmother again for a very very long time so i wouldn't like to think that my experience has put you off calibrating your grandmother if it needs it now as i said again mine i don't think really needed it so i would suggest just calibrating it if it is really out of tune having said all that i am sure hundreds and hundreds of people have successfully calibrated their grandmothers without any adverse effects I am showing and telling you what happened to my grandmother so I sort of felt it necessary to insert this disclaimer. So in spite of all my problems I hope you found this video helpful and you will be able to decide whether or not your Moog grandmother needs calibration and whether or not you want to calibrate it. So as always I do appreciate you spending time with me watching my videos and listening to my problems so for that thank you very much indeed if you are interested in the grandmother i have a lot of other videos about it hints and tips 
tutorials and so on i shall leave a link to those in the description and see if i can pop a card up there in the corner and of course if you do like this sort of thing and electronic music and synthesizers you might want to consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell thank you so you get informed of new videos as soon as i release them and hitting the big thumb is always appreciated because it lets me know that you are enjoying the videos so that's it for this video thank goodness i will see you again in the next one